Get him. I just wanted to update you. I spoke with John over at American Financing, and the reason who oh whoever they she... were compl- this woman complained she couldn't get four questions answered. For example, are there closing costs? What is the rate for a fifteen year, and what is the rate for a thirty year? And then what is do my does my home have to be appraised? She said I couldn't get anyone to answer me. Now the person Lisa spoke to when she was setting up the appointment was not a licensed mortgage broker, and it is illegal for somebody not a, who's not a licensed broker. To give out all that info. And they also said, you know, I said, well, she lives 35 miles away. They're willing to go meet her wherever to get this done. If she still wants to meet with them, they will accommodate her. But they said the reason the person wouldn't answer the questions is it's illegal because he's not a licensed broker. Right. The law it's says a you have to be licensed. Okay. Now, that being said, if someone was serious about making an appointment, why wouldn't you transfer him to someone who's a broker if there was some, well maybe there was no one available but i would say okay hold on you'll you'll have to speak to a a licensed professional or something i don't know that's just my thought 303713 talk one of the things i i ought to mention too is that there are people don't work on commission so there wouldn't be an incentive to rush people in the door they're getting paid the same either way and uh, it's just a fact. I'm not sticking up for him. I'm just talking about facts. Jim, go ahead. What's happening? Hi, Jim. Jim? Uh, yeah, man. What's going on? Hey, it's an honor to talk to you. I oh, an you honor? Well, I never heard that. Hey, thank you for calling. What's going on? You know, two things. First off, I heard somebody put one of your companies. I'm a big believer in your referral list. Thank you, Jim. Plumbing are fabulous. They're good people. They're good people. What's going on, Jim? Yes, they are. Now I've got another problem, and I could kick myself in the head on a roofing issue for not going to one of your referral list companies. Did, you didn't I, go to someone who knocked on the door, did you? Yeah, I did. Oh, man. Me Why? And, uh, several, of, several of my neighbors, and we're screwed now. What I happened? I wanted to get your opinion on whether or not this company has a leg to stand on. Well, hold on now. It, several of your neighbors as well are having problems? Well, uh, several. There's, there's, there's three of us. Tell us what's so, happening. Well, you know, we, we signed this piece of paper, which I thought gave this guy the authorization to talk to my insurance company, put some numbers together, come back and say, this is what's going to cost. Yeah, I know. That's road. what everyone thinks, except you signed an actual contract. Well, but there's two places to sign there. And at the very bottom, there's another signature place. And that says you're now held to the, you know, all the small print on the back of the form. And because of various things that have happened, we all believe that uh, this company is very misleading and very deceptive. And, uh, you know, so we've canceled, and now they're informing me, of course, you know, that they're going to send me an invoice for thousands of dollars of cancellation fees. And I'm just curious, in your opinion, is do they have a leg to stand on, or is this just a bluff? Okay. you got to tell me more about the contract. All right? Okay. Now, the- I need okay, to – I would almost want to see it, but explain it to me now. It, it's – tell me what it, it – really – that's really rules, okay? That rules everything. So right. tell me about it. Well, there's a place in the middle that you sign, and the oral representation was made that uh, this is to give us authorization to talk to your insurance company, which makes sense. They're not going to talk to somebody without my authorization about my file. Right, and then what? And uh, you know, and then but we'll, there's we'll no price the on it. There's no price on it. There's nothing. No numbers whatsoever. And at the very bottom, there's another signature place for the owner and the co-owner and dates. And under that, it says you're you're held if you sign. You know, on the above line to the contract terms on the back. Well, I'm not totally unsophisticated. And, when and, I and you didn't that, sign. Like, and you didn't sign there. Is there a three day right to rescind on that contract? Uh, I'm not sure, Tom. To be honest, because with you. No, if they did back it, in June. L- well, I know, but if they didn't tell you about a three day right to rescind in your home, then then they have to tell you about it, and then you have three days from the time they tell you about it. So. I, I'm saying that you're probably not held to that. Are they? What, do you want to cancel? Is that what you want to do? Absolutely. I, and I and what did they say? Did they say there was a penalty clause? Absolutely. They said they're going to charge me twenty percent for overhead and for twenty uh, percent of what? If there was no amount on the contract, twenty percent of what? Uh, of my insurance. What the insurance has agreed. Is to that what the is, is there? Is there a penalty clause in the contract? On the very back, it does say something about, yes, paying 10% for overhead and 10% But does it for 10% of what? It doesn't say. See, that's the problem. If it's a blank, if it's a blank contract, they, what, what are they getting? Let's talk to uh, Jay. Brett's at Excel Roofing. Brett, Jet, uh, Jay. Tom, how are you? Good, man. What do you have to say about something like this? I hate those things. That's of course. I have to say about it. I but if it's it. a blank contract, how can they charge 
you know, 10% or 12%. It's crazy. They've invested no money at all in the deal. They're trying to, what they're doing is they're holding the guy hostage. If I was him, I would call that roofing company or whatever kind of company it is and say, look, if you force me into this contract, it's going to be forever before I pay you. Hey, okay, Jim, <laughs> Jim ahead, what sir. is the name of the roofing company? Uh, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful? Who yeah. are they? I never heard of them. They're one of they're one of the guys that have popped up. Okay. They're, you know, they're, they're, they've got a perfect rating at Better Business Bureau. Well, that I mean, hold on, hold on, hold on. And, and which you know, and it's my fault. I I know better. I should have gone to the referral list. And I have since talked to uh, Excel, and, and they've given me a bid. And uh, I'm probably going to go with them. Yeah, but listen, you. I want to look at that. If, Mike, get him to fax us that blank contract, please. Get him to fax. Because he's telling me there's two places for signatures, and i got to see that. Thanks, Jay, for answering that. Okay, guys, you showed me this photograph. You went down and saw his car. This, I can obviously see what he, this happened when he started washing the car. Right. Pressure well, washing. he doesn't have a torn up bumper. What he's had is a bumper replacement. They replaced the, the, the fascia, and it wasn't prepped right, and it's peeling paint. That's it's all what, it is. That's what it's that's what He it's made it about. sound like it's a big collision. No, I don't believe so. There's, there's obviously been a collision because they wouldn't replace the bumper cover. But, uh, and then they didn't put the bumper of the uh, grill in the back. Does it look right underneath like there's any problem? There's no evidence underneath. I crawled under the car. The, no the, damage. Yeah, the radiator support, everything does, it appears to be all original. So it was just some bumper damage, some minor bumper yeah, damage. Yeah, and then they put a bumper cover on it, and it, the, the paint wasn't prepped right to, to, to adhere to the so bumper. So to have that painted so, would be what? He said 500 Well, it, he had a, from uh, another independent uh, $481. Uh, you think that's about it? It's uh, probably a little bit tall, but uh, as far as that goes but uh, so this somewhere is how was the car clean i thought it was clean yeah it's a it's a yeah. rental car i mean he yeah. bought a rental car but uh, it had a bumper replacement and they didn't do the repair right all right it's a big deal the, the point i'm making is he made it sound like he had to have seen this when he bought it well i don't know if he did or not tom because he says he started washing and the paint's just fl- oh, it's just okay. peeling off all so right. it might have been it might have been where you wouldn't have seen it Okay. Mike, what were you going to say? Oh, I just want to say, Dan on line four has an update that I think uh, the listeners would enjoy, and it, it kind of sets the weekend Who off Dan? perfect. Dan? on line four. Dan, go ahead. Dan, which one were you? Which problem? Uh, this was just an update. Uh, you can put this under problem solved. Peppers in Parker is running an ad for a new general manager in Westport. Oh, are you kidding me? So nope. Trappers is asking for a new general manager. Yep. I uh, then then you know what? Uh, good, good. Uh, they finally woke up. So Logan, yeah. we think Logan was fired. Uh, thank you, Dan, for that update. Uh, well, what we'll do is check that out. Remember, is Trappers? this clear back from that party? Yeah, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, and then we had several complaints after that, but apparently he was fired. We think, but Mike, we wanna, we might wanna just call and verify that because I have nothing against, the, you know, the the people who run that place. If they got rid of this guy, that was the only problem there. It was a nice place, but this guy was wrong. He was bad. He was vulgar. He was disgusting, and he should have been fired a long time ago. Okay, now, on this bumper thing, it could have been just a little tiny thing that got bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, as he's washing it, it's going to keep peeling paint on, on that particular part. It's going to keep peeling All right. paint. All right, so it's going to keep peeling. So somebody needs to take it down, prep So what it do you right, think? The it. dealer should uh, split it with I, him? I, at, at the least, I think that should happen. At the least? At meaning the least. Meaning you think they should have taken care of it for him? Well, they probably should have, but... Uh, on a used car yeah, as but, is. Okay, good. So, All right. Well, but if they would split, that would be... Uh, to me, I think the guy would be... What do you think, ahead. Ron? I think the car was sold. I think the gentleman looked at it before he left with the vehicle. And with all due respect to Eugene, I think the car was as is, and the dealer shouldn't have to do nothing. Okay. That's so, my opinion. All right. Now, uh, we're going to try to revisit this uh, next week. We're we're uh, done right now. But Roly, Pure Foy, Pure Fresh Chevrolet, thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. Affordable Transmissions, Ron Shaw, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Another Tom. great show. Save all your problems for me.